What's up, tubers? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight with some more late breakdowns, but this time I'm throwing you for a loop. That's right. We are leaving Texas and we're going to Louisiana. We're not leaving Texas completely. We're still doing lake breakdowns in Texas, but tonight we're going out to Louisiana to a very famous lake, Caney Creek Lake. Uh, this one actually held, MLF held a tournament out here this year. Uh, earlier in 2022 and absolutely smashed it. Caught huge fish out here. Looked like an awesome lake. So we wanted to break it down and kind of see what they were fishing. See if we could kind of figure out some patterns on this lake and hopefully share you guys some good spots for if you ever want to take a trip out there. It's only about four hours from DFW. Definitely looks like one we need to go check out. Stick around. I got some good stuff for you. Let's go. All right, well, let's jump in here to uh, to Caney Creek in Louisiana, uh, and let's uh, let's talk about what we can find here. So this was a little bit tougher. Um, the water doesn't really fluctuate as much. I don't have a Texas Parker Wildlife page that I can share with you that tells you about all the species here and the fish attractors and all of that stuff. So a lot of stuff that I don't really you know can't really get from this lake, but I was still able to break it down pretty well by the contour lines from Navionics as well as what we were able to just kind of uncover using Google Earth. So if you've never been with me on one of my breakdowns before, first thing I want to show you is over here on the left-hand side, we've broken down this lake by a couple different categories, the offshore hotspots, different types of cover. That's going to be, uh, you know, your laydowns, your brush piles, and things like that. The offshore hotspots, they're actually created by using web app uh, Navionics, or not web app, but actually using the mobile app for Navionics and then taking those waypoints, importing those into Google Earth and then putting this together as a package. We've also got different types of, uh, and you can see those here, you probably won't be able to see them unless I move that up. So let me move that up and now you can see all the different offshore spots. Now those are really based on contour lines. So if we see contour lines or different types of points, things like that, where the contours tell you what's going on, we mark those as high percentage areas uh, for you to go check out. There's no guarantee there's going to be fish there, but we are projecting that those are going to be really good areas to check out. So we've got quite a few of them that are there. We've also got different types of cover again, laydowns, brush, uh, particular docks like this dock in particular was very special. And you'll see why when we go through the breakdown. We've also got channels and ditches. You can't see much of it here, but when we get back up in here, you can really see that. And where this comes in handy is when you import it into your graph, let's say you're fishing this this little cove area right here. And I don't know the names of all these pockets, so I apologize. Uh, but let's say that you're fishing this area right here and you really want to focus on the creek channel when you get back in this area. Maybe it's in the fall, maybe it's in the spring. This is really where you want to go look at. Lots of good vegetation and all kinds of stuff back here. But really what you need to know is where is that creek channel? Well, if you use this map, it will tell you exactly where the creek channel is. So you can position your boat on top of these tracks or to the side of whatever angle that you want to use to really be able to fish that creek channel um, effectively. So let's say that, for example, on this given day, the wind is blowing in from this way um, and you want to set up on this creek channel and really fish one of the big turns. Well, if you set position your boat right over here in this area, you could cast across this big turn this big bend and probably get into some pretty good fish so that's just an example of how you could use that track to your advantage so we'll go over those we'll talk about those different creek channels that we were able to find using this imagery we'll also talk about all the different ramps that we found on this lake there's not a bunch of them um, which is pretty cool i don't like those lakes that have a ton of ramps but the ones that have the isolated ramps this can really be a good pattern to actually fish on so check out the boat ramp pattern don't be afraid of it you'll be surprised at what hangs out around those boat ramps. And then last but not least, just all kinds of different rock formations, whether it was just a little bit of scattered rock along the bank or whatever it was, we tried to pick out any areas where we could find any rock. You know me, if you followed any of the channel at all, uh, I really like to fish around rock. I mean, rock is key here in Texas. I would imagine it's gonna be the same thing pretty much no matter where you go. So we do mark those areas. Now I will say one thing, on the rock areas on this lake, sometimes for whatever reason, there's some aquatic vegetation that's in this lake. And sometimes it'll get confusing on whether it's rock or if it's that aquatic vegetation. So 
Uh, I just want to put a disclaimer out there right now. Like, let's say, for example, if we're in here right now in this area, um, it looks like there's some rock right here. If I draw this back to 2012 and show you this, it looks like that there are some rock here. But the problem is this aquatic vegetation grows around that rock. Like here, you can tell there's rock because you can see the little the little piece of rock right there, but that aquatic vegetation is all around that seawall as well. So you've got rock around the seawall, but you've also got that vegetation. So just be aware when we're talking about rock on this lake, or if you buy a card from simplisticfishing.com, that the rocks, you just got to kind of keep that in, in, you know, keep that in mind. Um, it really, if you're really focusing on rocks, you could come across some spots where you, even though there's rock there, you might not be able to fish it like rock because of all the vegetation that is around it. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's start breaking this thing down. I'm not sure how long we'll be able to uh, to go here. Let's go for about 20 minutes or so and see what we can cover on the lake. And then I'll circle back with the next video and we'll keep going. So always on all of our videos, what we do is we start off, we uncheck the offshore stuff, move this box over, and we draw the lake down to uh, however far we can get it to go down to expose this stuff. Now on this lake, this lake doesn't have a ton of fluctuation, believe it or not. So there's not a ton of stuff that we can see by just drawing the water down like some of the Texas lakes where we can draw it down and it's 10, 14, you know, shoot, Ivy was like 30 feet down or something like that. We can expose a ton of stuff. That lake does not have this type of imagery, but it still gave us enough when you pull it down, it still gives us enough to be able to see things that are pretty close to the shoreline. And then the contour mapping on this lake was really, really good. So that's really going to help us out when it comes to offshore. So when we start off, and I think we're going to talk about this on the offshore, but something's going out on out here, guys. Um, I just wanted to show this to you before, before anything, but look at all these boats that are right out here. And then if you move this up to a different lake, I think here it is. Look at this right here. I don't know if this is a major tournament going on or what this is, if this is a big uh, grass flat. We'll talk about it, and I'm sure we're going to understand what it is when we pull it up on Navionics, but have you ever seen that many boats in just one little area? And they all appear to be bass boats. They're not like party boats. They're all fishing boats. A lot of them look like crappie or smaller type fishing boats that don't really look like that many bass boats. Uh, maybe some of them are, some of them are. But anyway, some interesting stuff. Anytime you see something like that, you know, hey, something's really special going on right in that area. Could be those diffusers, could be weed lines, could be humps. Not sure, but we're going to talk about it. Don't worry. Come back when we do the offshore hotspots and we'll figure out what that is that's over there. So let's start here at the dam. Obviously, if you're fishing around the dam, you're going to find the rock. So there's rock listed there by the dam. Over here by the parking lot, there is some additional rock, some really shallow rock that's right in here. And you see where that vegetation is as well. Almost every time you find the vegetation, you find that rock really near close by it. So right here, you've got some rock. You've got the ramp here. It looks like one of the main ramps. A lot of people, uh, you know, launch in there. So that one's going to be a hard one to fish. When we get back in this area, a couple different shallow spots where it looks like it has some hard stuff. Uh, not really, you know, tons of riprap and stuff, but at least a little bit of a hard area. Right here, you've got some rock. Right in here, there's an old ramp that's right here. But you've got some rock that's right in here as well. If I pull the image down, you'll be able to see it'll just a little bit better. Pull up to 2012. You can tell there's a little bit of hard area there. Right in here, you can tell there's rock here. Really, one reason is because you can see it right there. You can see that there's a hard spot. So there's a lot of rock right here, right up against this uh, seawall, but you can see that vegetation is right up against it too. Now it's dead at that time, but you know there's a hard spot there around, uh, you know, at least around that seawall. Moving on up, you're kind of seeing the same thing. There's a little bit of rock here, a little bit there, a little bit back in the back, and then it looks appears to be some right here in this area as well. Uh, there's nothing really too special, to be honest with you, that I would I would see back in that uh, that area, except for right in here. I really like um, I really like this boat ramp. How this boat ramp sets up. It's probably not used too much. It's probably dug out. It's got some pretty good little ditches and stuff like that. There's a little bit of rock nearby, a, a nice point nearby. So I probably put a lot of my attention more in this area if I were to fish that spot. Uh, but definitely, you know, maybe if you're just beating down the bank line, check out those other other areas. That's going to be a lot better bank line to fish over here than it is right in this area. All right. So moving on over, here's a nice dock. 
right here off the point that's got some trees underneath it. Now, I don't know if these are cypress trees or what they are, but definitely has some trees underneath it and probably some brush piles and all kinds of other good stuff. You want to check out that dock. That's probably the, you know, the number one dock to fish that's on that lake. If you look over here just to the left of it, though, you'll also notice that we've got some brush that's right over here in this area. And another one of those, I don't know if it's a cypress tree or what, but it's very isolated. So I really like that. That's isolated cover. Uh, it's really good cover. It's off of a point. Everything about it really, really looks good. So definitely somewhere there I, I would, I would want to go focus. Now, as we move further up, just didn't see too much. You know, I was looking for rocks, looking for anything that was pretty much different. Um, I wanted to mark it, and I just didn't see too much. You can see it's just kind of the same bank line. You've got the seawall that you could fish, but I can't just mark seawall. You guys would laugh at me if I did something like that. Um, you know, if I'm just looking at this, really, since we don't really have anything to break down here, if I'm, if I'm looking at all this and I'm thinking, all right, if I had to fish uh, this area docks, what docks would I focus on first? Well, let's talk about that. So for me, the first dock that I would focus on would probably be this one up here at the top, right here. And if we pulled in that pull point, for sure that one, um, and then this one. So that'd be my number one, this would be my number two. Then my number three would probably be on the other side of the point. So either this one, um, Maybe that one. I'd say this one right here. And then if I had to break it further down to say, okay, I would go over to the other side. And I would start right off the edge of this point. So now I've kind of hit all the points, right? One, two, three. This one wasn't really a good point, but it's close thing to it. And then this one. And then if I still didn't find any fish in there, then I may actually go to the very backs. So then I'm going to go to maybe this one where it's super shallow. Or maybe this one over here where it's in the back of this little pocket maybe come up here and fish these two, but some way, somehow you'll find a little bit of a pattern if you just kind of focus on that. And that's a good way to just kind of break down a boat rock, boat dock pattern. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, some other things that I found up in here, we had some rock that was coming off of this point. Again, if you look at this, if I zoom in, there's a little bit of debris there too, but you got that vegetation as well. So it's a hard spot, but that vegetation just grows right in it. You can see here a little bit better. You definitely have a hard area there, but you've got all that, that vegetation too. So uh, just maybe something to check out. You definitely got a little point that's out there that could be attracted to that. There could be a little ditch right in here in this area. Of course, if there is, we'll probably see it uh, on Google Earth, or not on Google Earth, but on the Navionics side. And then one thing, if I pull in here, I don't know if you guys can see that but it almost looks like there's a few beds back in here. Now this could be uh, pad stems. So old pads that have died off, they'll, they'll, a lot of them will leave those little pocket things that are those little, I don't even know, they look like craters in the, in the bottom of the lake, but sometimes that's what that is. So that could be what it is. But if you think about it and you think about how that sets up, okay, it's protected here from the wind. So they're kind of out of the wind there. Um, this water is going to warm up pretty good because it's going to get a lot of a lot of sunshine and a little bit of northerly wind. If you move further in, now you're going to be protected even more by the wind, and you've got this nice little pocket here. It looks like you got a deeper spot right in here. You got some shallow a shallow point nearby. This could be a really good pocket to take a look at, especially in the springtime. So let's keep moving on. Sorry to put too much focus on a pocket, but hey, that's what we're here for, trying to help you guys out and find some more fish. Let's keep moving on down. We've got some more rock that's around in here. There's a little bit of a brush um, that was back in this area. It's kind of hard to see on this image, but if I move it up, you'll be able to see it. I think it was in 2013, it showed itself just a little bit. So there's some brush right in there. Again, you know, that, that rock or vegetation or whatever you want to call it, but it, it, it's going to attract fish. It should attract fish. I'm sure it's got oxygen in it and stuff like that. Plus, it's a hard surface, so that's always a good area to go look for fish. Now, let's keep moving on up. Didn't see too much on these, just a bunch of seawalls and things like that. Not too much going on there. As we get out here, uh, and we'll talk about it offshore, that's a really cool looking point right there. You know, main lake, right dead smack center. Looks like a really good spot to go take a look at. Let's swing around this side. As we get further back in here, we've got some more rock. 
And this one's actually exposing itself. You can see, really see the rock here in this one. You can't see it as much over here. You can kind of, if you zoom in, but you've got a really good hard area right back here in this pocket. So I could see that being a good spot to take a look at for sure. Moving on up, didn't see too much in here. Now there is a little point that comes off. It appears to have a little bit of a rock or at least a hard spot right in this area. So look right in there and see what you can find. You'll notice also, I didn't mark it because I can't see the rock, but that same stuff that we were seeing before when we were able to see some exposed rock, that same stuff is right over here. I mean, you've got a drainage ditch, so my guess is this has got to be some kind of a hard surface. And then you've got all of that hydrilla stuff or whatever, not hydrilla, but all of that uh, vegetation all around it. So this could be hard area as well. I just can't confirm it on the image, but you may want to take a look at it because there could be a little ditch or something like that right in here. And that could be a good hard spot for them to collect in. That whole area looks like it could have some potential. As we move around these points, again, you know, we'll talk about the points and the offshore stuff. Uh, but as we move up here, you got the same thing again, you know, these hard surface areas, these harder areas where uh, where that stuff is growing. You've also got a little rock right in here. Maybe you'll leave in a little personal ramp. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, just some stuff to check out. And then, of course, you got riprap going all along this uh, this dam and this roadway. Not dam, but this roadway that's right in here. Now, as we looked further back in here, we really didn't find anything. You know, there wasn't anything that we could point out. That's not to say that this isn't a really, really good area. You definitely want to come back in here and check this out. There's some really good stuff that's back in here. Uh, we're hoping that we, you know, we'd be able to find like a, a creek channel back in here that we could we could mark for you guys, but there's just nothing here that we could mark for you. But this looks awesome to fish. I mean, getting back in here, getting in this shallow stuff, getting over here in these flats and, you know, just working around any of these open areas that you can find. Those are probably some old creek channels, but it's so hard to tell in this imagery. We couldn't really mark it for you. We can't see it that well, but all this stuff um, just looks awesome. It's definitely the kind of stuff, uh, you know, that I really like to fish. There's a boat ramp there that we missed a little personal boat ramp. So let's go ahead and mark that one so we don't forget it next time. And then moving down, you know, just again, didn't see a lot of stuff we can mark for you guys, but a good area to go fish. It's shallow. It's just not a lot of cover that we could find in the water. Um, but if, you know, if the water comes up, you got a ton of stuff you could flip around, things like that. You probably got underwater vegetation as well that's going to be in here this is a really good area for them to get up into in the springtime before they go spawn getting up in these areas and way up in here also in the fall you know that's going to be a good area to focus on as well as getting up here in these flats and really checking those things out so let's swing around let's go down underneath that bridge and right in here you can see that there's a little bit more rock right in here in this area and I think, if I remember right, um, there's also a little personal ramp that's right there, too. So another ramp that we missed. And I like that one. That one's very, very isolated. But if we're looking at this, and I think if we looked at it on, uh, when we look at it on the contours, this is dug out pretty good, I believe. Like back in here. And so it's a pretty interesting little area to fish around. I like that pocket. It's it's not main lake, but it's it's basically open enough in the, in the lake. It's pretty close to main lake. It's just right off the main lake. I like how that area sets up. That looks like it could be a really good spot to take a look at. And then let's swing back around here. I'm going to take about five more minutes, then we're going to cut this one off. Let's swing back and let's go up here. Again, not seeing too much. You know, this is just that, that normal bank line. Now, one thing you might want to pay attention to is anytime you see some of this stuff growing up, of course, there's no rock there. There just can't be. It just doesn't even look like a, a hard surface behind it. So never mind. Scratch what I was saying. Let's keep moving on. Maybe had would have had some hard surface areas in here because you can tell there's a little bit of hard surface area on the ground um, that's out of the shore. But you got a seawall that's protecting it. So there could be some hard surface right in here. You know, check out that dock. That dock looks like it could have some potential. Moving in here, you just got these little pockets, but again, nothing for us to be able to mark. No laydowns, no big, no big rock, nothing like that. Um, you know, this almost looked like an old boat ramp, but it's washed out. I can't really tell what it is, but maybe fishing in around here and stuff like that. But again, nothing really we can mark for you. Now, when we did get back here, though, we were able to see a little bit of a ditch back here. So if I move this back to 2012, 
We can pick it up just barely, but there's a pretty good little ditch that runs right through that area. So go in and look at that. You can also find some additional rock that's over here off this point. So a real good little point here, but notice how it's a real hard edge. We're right there on the edge of it. It looks like it's broken off or something, but you've got a little bit of rock going on right there off the inside of that point. Didn't see too much back in here. Um, you know, not a real good creek channel that we can mark for you or anything like that. But again, spawning time, these are really good areas to go look at, especially right up in here. This looks like a really good spot for them to go very well protected. Uh, you know, just everything about it, it just, just looks really good. Now moving on down, of course, lots of docks that you can fish. There's a little bit of rock behind this dock. Again, there's that vegetation. There's the rock. It is go hand in hand. And then as we move down here, we've got a little bit more rock just right here off the edge of this point. You can see it. You can see the vegetation right out by it as well. But some pretty good rock going on right in here. Looks like maybe an old ramp right in there too. So fish this dock. Of course, I'm going to tell you to fish that dock no matter what. It's a dock off a point and it's isolated. You definitely need to fish that dock without a doubt. I mean, that's no brainer. Got to fish that dock. Move it up here, you got lots of docks. Again, real good area, spawning wise, to uh, for them to get back in there and get get a lot of cover and get a lot of uh, you know protected from the wind. And then back in here, there's this little bit of scattered rock just off the edge of this point. So check out that right there. Let's see where we want to finish this thing up at because that's gonna about gonna wrap us up. Let's wrap ourselves up up right here off this point, and then I will come back on the next video and we'll continue to work our way up until we can finish this entire lake. So as we move down through these docks, you know, didn't see too much, not too much for me to uh, to mark for you guys. But again, if you're if you're fishing docks, you know, focus on the points, focus on the, the primary points first, then focus on the secondary points. If you don't get bites on either one of those and you just have, say, 30 docks of fish, then go fish the backs. And then by one way or the other, hopefully you've caught a fish on one of those or a couple fish on one of those. And then whatever one that you're catching the most on, then start really focus, focusing in on just those areas of docks. So then you can pretty much take that dock pattern and run it throughout the lake because they're going to be pretty similar. Now, a lot of times it's not that easy. A lot of times it's going to be find a boat dock that's on a point that has a creek channel swing. And every time you find that, you find money um, or find a boat dock that is isolated, that doesn't have another dock within you know, four or 500 yards on each side. And that dock is money. Um, and you can run that throughout or find the docks that have the wooden poles and not the metal poles. There's just all kinds of different things. Um, but that pattern I was telling you about as far as, you know, main points, secondary points, back of coves, try to figure it out that way. If, if you're fishing tons of docks, that's, that's worked for me pretty well. So, you know, definitely give it a try. See what you think. All right. And then moving on down here, uh, we've got some rock that's around this point as well. This one, you can definitely see some riprap, and then you can also see uh, all the growth that's around it, but you definitely got some pretty good rock in there as well. So let's go ahead and finish there. Again, I'm going to come back, so stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm going to come back and finish breaking down this lake from the Google Earth side, probably take us two or three more videos. Then we're going to swing back around. I'm going to pull it up in Navionics, and we're going to look at it from a contour perspective and see what we can find on the offshore side. So if you haven't gone out to our website yet, please do simplisticfishing.com. You can actually get all of these waypoints already put on an SD card for you to where you can just basically plug it right into your graph. We also offer digital files as well. So you can order the digital file and I will email that over to you, which will be the files that you need to basically copy to an SD card and then plug it into your graph. Uh, it just makes it a little bit quicker, allows you guys to get get access to it a little bit quicker. Anyways, go check that out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, tight lines.